Well, welcome to Sweet Tea and Prophecy. I'm Buster Wilson. Joe Hawkins. Joe, you have done the right thing. You've got sweet tea today yeah. like you always do. There you go. And uh, I guess I'm going to have to be uh, sweet Coca-Cola in prophecy today. Is that all right? That we, sure is you, you okay with that? Absolutely. All right, good deal. Well, we are here today to talk to you about some uh, interesting stuff, I tell you. Um, I know you've been watching a lot of stuff. Uh, we both are kind of what we call watchmen. Oh, yeah. We like to look and see what's going on in the world and see how it relates to Bible prophecy and relate it to folks so they can be aware. Oh, yeah. We're called, um, we're definitely called to be watchers on the wall. And in the times that we live in right now, it's, it's very evident that we need to be watching because there's so much, there's so much going on and so much that people need to know about. And, and that's our job. Once we know about these things, it's, it's our responsibility and obligation to, to pass that information on because, um, as, as it said in Ezekiel 3, um, the blood is going to be on our hands yeah. if, we don't, uh, if we don't inform people of what's going on. That's right. So we want to tell people because if we know the truth and we don't tell people, then they don't repent, then their blood will be required of us, the Lord says. But if we tell people and they still don't repent, their blood will be required of them, their, themselves, will be free from their blood. And it's not that we want to necessarily be free from people's blood, but we want to make sure that everybody knows so that everyone can repent and come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For me, that's what it's all about. I know that's true for you oh, yeah. too. Um, we want people to be saved and be able to enjoy eternity with Jesus Christ. Oh, absolutely. I, I think that we were all there at one point. We all kind of buried our head in the sand. We just wanted to turn on the TV and watch a game and just kind of disconnect from the world. And, and especially over the past three to five years as the world has just kind of gone into overdrive, that, that convergence that we talk about, um, it's mm -hmm. made it just that much more evident that, that we, it's, it's hard to turn it off and it's hard to, to not want to say things, and, and I have a hard time doing that as well. It, it, it's certainly, uh, once you know these things, you do have that obligation to, to turn it, um, to tell others. That's right, that's right. Well, Joe, i got a scripture for us to start with tonight, and that is from Isaiah 46, where the Lord says, For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is no one like me declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things which have not been done, saying, My counsel will be established and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. Amen. God is a God uh, unlike any other that might call itself God. He is the only one because, I mean, this is one of the grand features that makes him God is that he knows the beginning, the end from the beginning. He can declare things that have not happened yet because he knows about it and he is actually the author of it. Uh, he's the one who's going to cause it to happen and see it happen. I love Romans 8 where it says that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. God is in charge. That's what comforts me. God is in charge. Now we live in a world that is under the prince of the power of the air. The devil is uh, well at work in this world. There's no question about that. And uh, we can see his uh, lawlessness all around us. But God is still in charge. God is still the ultimate sovereign. And everything is not falling apart, as Jan Markell loves to say. But it's all falling, falling into, into place. place. Absolutely. That's right. and, and you know, and, and Going back to the conversation we had yesterday, actually, we talked about how, you know, God has the three omnis. The, he's omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. You know, he's all-knowing, all-powerful. And, and that's something that when we talk about some of the things that we talk about today, that is what Satan is trying to counterfeit. He's right. trying to become all-knowing and all-powerful and, and all always present. And that's something that he can't do from his physical being but that's something that he can certainly attempt to do through some of the things that, that we see going on today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, this is uh, the, the date that we're recording this is September the 6th, and right around the corner is something very special. 
it is the Feast of Trumpets. Oh, yeah. And uh, for those of you who may not be up on the, on the Feast of Israel, you say, why do I care? I'm not a Jew. Well, those, those things do matter because they're appointed times that God has given to the people of Israel, the people of God from the very beginning. And there are, they're called feast or appointed times, and there are seven of them. And three of them have already happened. They happen in the spring, and then in the, uh, rather four of them. And then in the fall, we have the last three. So the ones that have already happened in the spring would be Passover, then we have unleavened bread, then we have first fruits, and then we have Pentecost. And then the ones left to, be full, to, uh, to celebrate in the fall would be trumpets, and then 10 days later, Day of Atonement, and then after that, uh, the uh, tabernacles. So we're coming up on the Feast of Trumpets. And if you don't mind, I, I found something very wonderful from um, a friend of mine, uh, not, not, a, not a real good friend of mine, but we, we've, uh, our acquaintances. Uh, and I want you to hear what he has to say about the Feast of Trumpets. I believe that Rosh Hashanah, the fulfillment, see the, the next three feasts, the first four feasts had a literal fulfillment to the day. The next three feasts will have a literal fulfillment to the day, and there'll be earth-shaking events. There are going to be major earth-shaking events that'll affect every single person on earth. Well, the, I believe that the Feast of Trumpets, that the fulfillment is the rapture of the church. Now, Jesus can come at any time. I don't get dogmatic about this. I don't say there's only two days of the year where Jesus could come, but I believe that the fulfillment of the Feast of Trumpets is the or the fulfillment of the Feast of Trumpets is the rapture of the church. See, the one of the one of the the Jewish names of the Feast of Trumpets is the day that no one knows. Jesus said, "No one knows the day or the hour." Well, if I told you that Jesus was during Rosh Hashanah, you still don't know the day or the hour. It's called the wedding day of the Messiah. It's called the day of the awakening blast. The dead in Christ rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the clouds in the air. That's 1 Thessalonians 4. So all of the names for, there are many names for the Feast of Trumpets that the Jews have. They all speak of the rapture of the church. So I believe that Jesus could come next week. Could. I'm not saying he is. I never set dates. All right. That's Jimmy Evans. And Jimmy Evans is telling us about the Feast of Trumpets. And one of the things he says is very important. When you look at the... Um, the first four feast, you've got Passover. Passover was a picture of crucifixion. Right. And then you had unleavened bread, which was a picture of the burial of Christ. That's right. And then first fruits was a picture of the resurrection of Jesus. And then Pentecost was a picture of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Commemorated originally the giving of the law, but became a picture of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Because now we don't live under the law, but we live by grace in the Spirit of God. The interesting thing is that all four of those feasts were fulfilled exactly on the day, as Jimmy just said, on the day. They were fulfilled on Jesus was crucified on Passover. Mm -hmm. Jesus was buried during unleavened bread. And Jesus rose again on first fruits. And then the Holy Spirit came on Pentecost. So I believe, like Jimmy, that the Feast of Trumpets is a picture of the rapture. Now, I also believe, like him, that the rapture could happen at any time. I believe in an imminent rapture. Uh, we, would, we don't want to be guilty of saying there's only two days a year. The, the, the two days, by the way that you Jews uh, count daytime, you know, they count from... Sun, sunset to sunset is one day. So trumpets this year is actually the 16th and 17th uh, of September. So we're not saying there's only two days a year that, that the rapture could happen. But I, I really don't know how to explain it other than to say that I really do believe that trumpets is a picture of the rapture. But I'm not limiting the rapture to happening only during those two days. It's, it's hard to explain, but I'm excited every year when trumpets comes around. I really do get excited when those false feasts come. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and, and when we say things like 
trumpets is a picture of the rapture, like like what um, Brother B was just saying. It, it's not us saying that that the Feast of Trumpets is the rapture. It's it's a, it's a picture. I mean, there's right. you know God uses that throughout Scripture. I mean, we can see how um, Noah's Ark is a picture of Israel going through the tribulation period and being protected, and it's a, also a picture of the rapture of us being removed from God's wrath prior to it um, coming on this earth. So mm -hmm. those are what we mean when we say pictures, and, and we have different pictures and typologies throughout yeah. Scripture, and it's something that um, we will eventually dive into at some point and, yeah. and go over the different typologies and the, the types of Christ and the views and the types of rapture, but that's that's what we talk about when we say that. Well, you know, like Jimmy just said, that, that it is interesting that a lot of the terminology for Feast of Trumpets is also the terminology that Jesus used, I think, yeah. uh, in relation to the rapture, like no man knows the day nor hour. That's 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 from the Feast of oh, Trumpets. Yeah. Um, it, it it literally doesn't begin until the high priest declares it yeah. begins because of uh, the moon's got to be a certain way and he declares it and all that kind of stuff. And in order for them to know that, they have to be constantly watching. That's right. They got to be aware because it could happen in any minute. That's right. And so it's, it's, it's like I say, it's kind of hard to explain, but I do feel so excited when these fall feasts begin to come in because it just, it's just an air of expectancy every year. I get excited at Passover and, and, um, and unleavened bread and first fruits because that's a very special time oh, of the year. Absolutely. But anyway, so get ready for the Feast of Trumpets. It's right around the corner, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Now, we've got some other stuff we want to talk about. Which one do you want to bring up next? Well, let, let's go into this. Uh, let's go into the SDGs. I'm, I'm a little uh, peculiar about what's going on with the UN and the, the seven-year accelerated plan that they have to um, have this transformative action to achieve their social development goals that they that they so call that they're going to be implementing over the time, and they really are trying to get this in place before 2030. And we see that that 2030 date coming out a all lot. the time. It, yeah, it's, that 2030 date's been around for uh, the last several years, ever mm -hmm. since the the cough cough. Sneeze, sneeze, without getting us, um, censored. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I like the way you did that. Uh, but, but, do you think that's a coincidence, or do you think it's a, it, it's meant to be that way? I think any time that we see the number seven show up, like these periods of seven years and these periods of time like yeah. that, it, it certainly it, it it makes our ears perk up a little bit and, and wants our eyes opened up. And, and, and you know, on that note, I actually was listening to somebody earlier, and they were very upset that Christians, it's specifically those Christians that are in the prophecy community, that any time that they see seven years pop up, that they, that they do that, that they get excited, that they really start talking about it. They, they feel like it's more yeah. like clickbait or you know, just an opportunity for us to get views on our channels. But it, it's certainly a high time, and, and it... It comes from people that I don't think really understand the the scriptures as it's written in the context that it's written in, because any time that we see a period of seven years, we know that there is one period of seven years that is still remaining out there that needs yeah. to be fulfilled. Now that right. that period of time is set aside for the nation of Israel, but any time that we see that period of seven years showing up. It's certainly something that we should pay attention to. Yeah, I think it's I, I, it's significant because you don't see them talking a lot about uh, well, there was four and a half years of this and uh, seventeen and three quarter years for that. It's just very specific. A lot of times you see that very specific seven years, seven years, seven years. I know Ezekiel thirty eight and thirty nine that that big attack uh, against Israel that hasn't happened yet that's coming in the future. Uh, there's a seven-year mention there, Absolutely. too. So it's um, it's it's significant. You're right. We do perk up when we hear that. But what's happening is the UN is having a, a, um, a conference in two weeks, yep. literally in two weeks if you're in September. And the purpose of the conference is to consider a seven-year 
um, let's see, I hit the wrong thing there, a seven-year plan for uh, accelerating the, uh, as they call them, the, S, the sustainable development goals. Yeah. And you might tell us a little more about what those yeah, are. Yeah, and I may have said social development goals. You know, with all these ESGs, yeah. DEI, SDGs, it all kind of blends together. But if you don't mind, you yeah, pop open that uh, that right there. These are the, the 17 goals that they're um, that they're talking about, and you can see them there on your screen. And just to just to not go into each one of them because it could take us all day long to talk about each one of these individually. But these are the goals. This is the plan that that the world, this new world order, as they call it, they have in place that they want to have for humanity. They want, um, number five, for example, is gender equality. They mm. want to have gender equality. And to them, gender equality is not just a equality between a male and a female. Right. It's a gender equality that says you can be whatever you want to be. If you're a male and you want to be a female, you can be that. If you're a female and you want to be a male, you can be that. I mean, if you're a child and you're five years old and you decide that, hey, I just want to wear a dress. If you're a boy and you say, I want to wear a dress, hey, I can do that. Or be a Tootsie Roll. That's a new one I heard the other day. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, <laughs> the, um, Tootsie Roll. The Tootsie Rolls, the, they're called furries. furries yeah. And, and, and they can be whatever they want to be. And, and, and that's just one of those things that we have to be careful with when we say, you know, you can be whatever you want to be. Don't take it too literal. Yeah. But so, and, and just other things, but and we were talking the other day about this is, in my opinion, these SDGs is the infrastructure that the Antichrist needs to have in place in order for him to have that total control during that seven-year tribulation period. Yeah. Because when, when that time comes, because you got to realize, Satan doesn't know when the rapture is going to occur. Satan doesn't know whenever that... No, that not any more than we do. Exactly. He doesn't know whenever that covenant is going to be signed, um, that covenant spoken about in Daniel 9 is going to be signed. So he doesn't know. So if he doesn't know, then he already has to have somebody in place, and he already needs to have that infrastructure in place in order to push forth his agenda. Right. Because the first few... Because you got to think, the, the type of infrastructure that he's going to have it's not going to just happen overnight. He's going to ha it's going to take time to build that infrastructure. And I think what we see right now with all of these actions taken through the UN, the WEF, the WHO, all of these alphabet organizations that we mm -hmm. see out there, we see all of those and, and the agenda that they're pushing, the infrastructure that they're putting in place. Um, we're going to get into a little bit of that later on. And, and as time progresses, but that is the infrastructure that I believe is going to be the mark of the beast system that's right. going to be implemented. That infrastructure is already going to be put in place so that whenever Satan um, puts in place his guy, the Antichrist, seven years kick off, boom, right then and there, everything's ready to go. Yeah. They're just going to flip that switch and it's going to be ready to go. It's not going to be a... Oh, we're going to build this, and it's going to take two or three years for us to get our infrastructure in place. It's already in place, and that's what we're seeing right now. To, back to why the seven years um, is it perks our ears up, and we, we listen. There's there's a prophecy about the prince who is to come, which is the the antichrist. We understand him to be the antichrist, and the prince who is to come. Uh, it says in Daniel uh, chapter nine, in verse twenty seven. He will make a firm covenant. Another translation says he will uh, confirm a covenant with the many for one week. Now, you have to understand the overall uh, prophetic structure of, of this whole situation in Daniel toward the end there. He talks about uh, 70 weeks, and he gives us, this is the neat thing about it. People say, well, how do you know that's seven years and all that kind of stuff? And I think you'd asked me that question earlier. Here's, here's why. Because he tells us that uh, there will be 69 weeks until from the time that the decree goes out to, to rebuild Jer Jerusalem till the time that the Messiah comes. Yeah. And so you, you look at the time from the time they decreed to rebuild Jerusalem after the Babylonian captivity and then all the way up till in, time, in the future time to when Jesus rode in on the donkey. To the day mm -hmm. 
it was 400 and what, whatever 69 times 7 is. I believe it was 483. 483 right. years to the day. So that gives us the primer, if you will, to know that the, the, how to interpret the 70 weeks. So there's one week left, and that's a week of seven days, or actually seven years. So we got the seven, seven years here. So he says he will make a firm covenant with the many for one week. That's the last week. That's the 70th week of the Daniel prophecy. So that's why we call it the seven years of tribulation. This is the Antichrist. This is during that seven years. And so the actual start of the tribulation itself is going to be with his confirming this covenant with many at the beginning of the seven years. Absolutely. So when we see uh, organizations like the UN talking about uh, uh, getting together a conference to talk about an agreement, a covenant, or whatever, for seven years, you're right. Our ears perk up and we sort of go, hey, that's, that could be significant. Now, the question is, this is happening in two weeks. Do we believe this is the, the Antichrist seven-year covenant that's mentioned in Daniel 9? I don't. I don't think it is. We don't have any really way of knowing uh, until after it happens, I guess. Uh, but I'll say this. If this is the covenant that Daniel talks about in t chapter 9, then between now and two weeks, we're going to have the rapture, and uh, the Antichrist is going to come forth and all of that. So it's a lot to have to happen in two weeks, and I just don't, I don't think that's it. But it is interesting that this world body, the UN, is talking again about 2030, in seven years and all that kind of stuff. Oh, so right. that really makes us perk up and listen to it. So keep your eyes and ears peeled on this to see what it is, to see what, what's behind it. And, and uh, they may come back and, and say, uh, yes, it's a seven-year covenant, but we're going we're gonna to have an official signing down the road. Ooh, then we really do pay attention okay. to it. Absolutely. And just a side note on the, the 79 week or the 69 weeks that Brother B was talking about, just to some homework for you. Feel free to go back to Nehemiah. Talk, go read that decree that he's referring to to build the wall around Jerusalem. Add those years up. Add the weeks up. Don't do it based off of the Gregorian calendar. Do it based off of the Jewish calendar because if we do it based off of our calendar, 365 days, you're not going to get the proper um, amount of years. You do it based on the 360 days referenced in the Jewish calendar, it's going to be like Buster said, to the day, um, and, it, and it's a wonderful, um, it's a wonderful tool to have, especially whenever you're um, trying to preach that message to people that that try to throw things at you that that you may not be aware of. And it is 483 years yeah. is, is what we we were thinking. But um, but yeah, great stuff right there. Yeah, absolutely. So that's kind of interesting. And then something else that came up this week that um, a little bit spooky to me. And that's uh, something outside of Russia, once again. And, and that is uh, Russia. Uh, Russian state TV threatens yeah. nuclear strike on the United States. This is World, and this is by Brendan Cole, September 4th. A Kremlin propagandist has issued the latest nuclear threat against the West regarding that Rosh Hashanah, the fulfillment. See, the, the next three feasts, the first four feasts, had a literal fulfillment to the day. The next three feasts will have a literal fulfillment the to the day, and there'll be earth-shaking events. There are going to be major earth-shaking events. Sorry about that. Jimmy Jimmy will come back again later on. But, yeah. yeah. So how many times does this make um, over the last years, especially since Russia has invaded Ukraine? It seems like he started talking about it then more than ever. He's going to have to get tactical nuclear uh, bombs out. He's going to have to use tac tactical nukes. And now he's saying directly uh, he's going to attack America mainland because we're giving support to Ukraine. But what makes it so interesting this time is the introduction of this new Satan II weapon. Yeah. And, and just the terminology with that, it, it's, um, it's, very, it's very telling. You know, we got a lot of people that have to, that they try to pick between the side of Russia and Ukraine. And, and I've never thrown my hat in the in the in the ring on either one. Both of them are, are corrupt. Both of them are wrong. 
from a country perspective. The people of the countries, they're just put in a bad situation. Yeah. And and I, I definitely pray for the people of both of those countries, but it, it certainly is telling to see where Putin's mindset is whenever he starts talking about these things. It's just almost like um it's almost like he's a he's a little pu puny little child ch child that <laughs> if he doesn't get his way, he's gonna threaten with nuclear missiles. And, yeah. and this is exactly what, what's happening here. He, he he got upset, now he's gonna threaten us with a Satan two nuclear missile. And this isn't anything to uh, it, it's a serious situation. I mean it, it's certainly something that we should be I don't want to necessarily say concerned about, but keep our eyes open. Yeah, on and be praying, of course, no because uh, any kind of nuclear weapon used, whether it's a, a localized tactical nuke or or an all-out national s onslaught, is going to is going to kill people. It's going to be bad. Um, one of the reasons we keep our eyes uh, open and ears open when we hear about nuclear weapons is because there is an incident, at least one, I think maybe two in the book of Revelation, uh, in chapter 6 of Revelation, when the sixth seal was broken, John reports seeing something that I think is a tactical nuclear strike. He says, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth made of hair and the whole moon became like blood and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as a fig tree cast its untimely figs when shaken by a great wind and the sky was split apart like a scroll when it is rolled up and every mountain and island were moved out of their place and the kings of the earth and the great men and the commanders and the rich and the strong and every slave and free men, they hid themselves in the caves of the ground. That sounds like folks running to nuclear bomb shelters and all that stuff. It yeah. certainly does. And the one thing we have to realize too is when, when John is writing down these words, these visions that, he's, that he sees, He's writing them down from a first century perspective. That's right. From a first century mind with a first century vocabulary. That um, So is it possible that what he saw was a nuclear explosion? I mean, it obviously hasn't happened yet. Yeah. So it's certainly possible. I mean, it, it's yeah. certainly possible. Let, let's go back to that clip from Jimmy if we could do that oh, yeah. and listen to what Jimmy has to say about that. Russian state TV threatens nuclear strike on the United States. This is World, and this is by Brendan Cole. September 4th, a Kremlin propagandist has issued the latest nuclear threat against the West regarding the war in Ukraine, warning that the U.S. could be in danger of a Russian missile attack. Igor Korachenko, editor of the newspaper National Defense and a regular guest on the Russian One Channel, where guests have repeatedly called for strikes against Ukraine's allies, took exception to criticism of Russian conduct in the war. You know, the, the Russians, the Russian economy is smaller than the economy of the state of Texas. And so um, it, it is a regional power. Russia, except for their nuclear arsenal, they're a regional power. Look at the war in Ukraine. The Ukrainians have humiliated the Russians. And Russia, you know, they've come out with all this bark. But there wasn't as big a bite behind it. Of course, now, you know, that uh, Putin is saying they have the Satan II missile that they're prepared to launch. They're prepared to use tactical nuclear weapons, according to them. This is one of the things that this article is talking about here. But they're threatening the West. And so we have tried very, the United States has tried very hard not to get involved directly in a conflict with Russia, even though we're giving Ukraine billions of dollars. This is a very political issue, and I don't want to get into the politics of it, but what I want to say is, this is why the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, they're the ones who have the doomsday clock. That's why at the beginning of this year, they had the doomsday clock at 100 seconds to midnight. They moved it up to 90 seconds to midnight. And they're looking at things like this. We have Iran and Russia currently threatening to, uh, to exterminate us through nuclear weapons. Iran means it. I mean, they're, they will do it as soon as they get nuclear weapons. They're going to strike Israel first or try to. And if they can, they're also going to strike us. This is a very real threat. Again, Jimmy Evans, and he has uh, quite a bit of insight and a lot of contacts and it's very interesting. Satan too, could you think of a better name for a destructive weapon? They, they picked one. I'll tell you <laughs> what, they picked it. Well, uh, another thing that's coming into being, I like to say all the time, Joe, that we're living in the shadow of the tribulation. And what I mean by that is, we are so close to the actual tribulation, I believe, 
And one of the things that makes me believe that is one of the tools that had to come along for the Antichrist to be able to do the things he does is something called artificial intelligence. And the reason for that is uh, Revelation chapter 13, it talks about uh, he's going to know who, buy, who has his mark or not, or whether or not they can be buying or selling. Uh, he's controlling all of that from one area of the world. How in the world can you keep up with as many people as there will be on the earth, even though the numbers will be greatly reduced by that time, still, how can he keep up with that many people without the power of artificial intelligence? And so artificial intelligence has come along, but right now it's starting to affect people's lives and be very much a part of the great deception that's coming along in the last days. It is, absolutely. And this goes back to what we were talking earlier about Satan He's not omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. He um he has to have these tools in place so that he can be the use the AI to survey surveil people through either um, cameras, audio, whatever it may be. He has to use these things, and in the process of using these things, these AI programs that that's coming out, they're having a very peculiar impact on our population and and and, and 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 we got one right now we have one an AI Jesus that that has kind of taken the internet by storm so to speak where you can actually get onto this app and speak or text with Jesus and type or what do they got chat with Jesus and ask Jesus any question that you want. And, and that's very scary for someone that may not be grounded in their faith enough to really understand what's going on. You know, because we always oftentimes hear people say, I really just wish that God would speak to me audibly. People want to yeah. hear God speak to them audibly. Yeah. And, and they want to know what God has, to, has for them in their lives. They don't want to pick up their Bible and read it. You know, I, I've, we've heard it often that, you know, if you want to hear what God has to say audibly, then pick up your Bible and read it out loud. And then you're going to hear mm -hmm. God's word audibly. Um, it, it, it's certainly a, a very scary thing to see whenever you start to see people in general, but our youth interacting with these particular uh, programs and asking them questions because I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, this AI Jesus is, it's, it's got an agenda. It's not going to give your kids the answers that they need. It's going to give them the answers that they want. I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's so scary because I have grandchildren that have cell phones and the, all you've got to do is you've got to get into these apps and you literally can be talking with an AI Jesus. It is, uh, you, you know what it reminds me of a lot? <laughs> it, it's, uh, I don't mean to be comical about it or funny about it, but you remember, the, you may be too young, I don't know, but remember the old uh, Max Headroom where the guy was the computer image and he would, you know, he would uh, he'd be jerky like this on the computer screen and he would be artificial intelligence and he could talk, but that's kind of what I saw in that AI Jesus. Oh. But he responds to questions that people ask him. And so kids can get on this app and talk to this Jesus and think that they're actually talking with God. And whoa, we have failed as a church for not telling and teaching and convincing our kids that they can actually talk to Jesus in prayer and hear him speak to them in his word. We have really missed it by not getting our kids to understand that. And so people today are hungry for the supernatural. Oh, yeah. And that's one of the things that's making people rush to this. Uh, and, and I think you just hit the nail on the head right there. When you say that people are hungry for the supernatural, yes. that's why we see so many movies coming out now about superheroes and and you're, you're seeing all of these self-help gurus come out about how you can live your best life now and, <laughs> and how you can, um, you know, you can be what you want to be. But in particular, these superhero movies and 
Marvel and comics and all these things, it's all about, and we'll get to this eventually, and Klaus Schwab is, is a big proponent of transhumanism. Mm. And, and, and it's all about making yourself better, making yourself a better human. And, and I actually watched a documentary recently called Superhuman. And, and, and that is what, um, what they're wanting to do. And, and that, it's very appealing to kids. I mean, I was there. I mean, I love to watch G.I. Joe and, and, yeah. and these um, Iron Man movies when I was younger, only to realize that it's an agenda that they've been pushing on kids so that they can be whatever they want to be. And it gets to the point to where kids start believing they can be whatever they want to be, and then they start going to school dressed as dogs and cats and mm -hmm. requesting um, litter boxes in the classroom. Oh, my goodness. And it's, it's, it's absolutely sick. But um, And then you see things that's just as blasphemous as an AI Jesus. Yeah. Um, and I have no doubt that the information that this AI Jesus is putting out is, number one, it's extremely deceptive, but it's probably very appealing to these children. Yeah. Um, I've interacted with this chat GPT thing, and... You can ask it to write you a report or write a book on whatever using Shakespearean language, and it'll write you a book right then and there within 30 seconds. It's absolutely unbelievable how quick this thing responds, and it, it's very, um, in my opinion, it's a very you know damning thing. To have out there and I hope that um, I really hope that people listen and don't allow their kids to just interact with this particular um, thing. Yeah and it's not just just the AI Jesus which is bad enough but what what would what would you say as I believe I would too is the very foundation of our Christian faith. We'd say the Word of God right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so what they're doing now is they're taking uh, this this AI and literally beginning to rewrite the Bible. Now, we know that uh, the uh, World Economic Forum, one of their leaders is talking about uh, AI uh, writing a new Bible oh, yeah. that we could all accept. Yeah, Yuval um, Noah Harari yes. has actually said that uh, AI will generate a Bible within the next few years that will actually be correct. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> correct. And he said, written by a supernatural intelligence, where everybody that's saying their book is written by a supernatural intelligence is wrong. One day it would be right because AI wrote it. Well, look, I got news for you. The Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. Every word is God-breathed out. We have a book that was written by a supernatural intelligence. But here's what's happened. Uh, Chat GPT, now this is not the, uh, the higher form, the GPT-4, but the Chat GPT has generated fake Bible verses uh, endorsing, now again, fake Bible verses, they're, they're made to look like the Bible, but the verses actually endorse and embrace trans transgenderism. And, and it's made to uh, make you believe that the Bible itself, and thus God, is uh, embracing and endorsing this whole thing of transgenderism. It's, it's crazy. It's already happening. And, you know, Jesus talked about Matthew 24, one of the biggest things about the end days, deception. Deception. It is, and, and it's absolutely blasphemous. And um, we know what the Bible says. We know what God's Word says whenever we add or take away things from His Word. And when you add things like that to His Word, yep. and it's going to deceive it. There are translations out there that have removed trigger language, as they call it, such as homosexuality, mm -hmm. bestiality, and different yep. things like that, just so that they can accommodate what they teach in their churches. And, and they're going to have things like this come out and... It's, it's when things like that come out, we know what the God, we know what God's word says, especially as it relates to children. If you were to make one of these stumble, it would be better if a millstone to be tied right. around your neck and thrown into the deepest. And, and it's um, it, it is something that I, I that concerns me, 
even as sheltered as I consider my kids, it's something that still concerns me. And, and it, it's something that everybody should be concerned about because everybody has one of these and, and, and it breaks my heart whenever I go out to eat. I was, I was out of state last week and, and I just saw kids, I literally saw a kid at a restaurant doing this the yeah. entire time. He stopped and they kept doing that. It, yeah. it's, very, um, it's very sad how much of a slave we've become to these phones and not that it's funny, but, and I, I tell it to Whitney, my wife, all the time, you know, as we're walking into Walmart, you know, I kind of look at, look around it from time to time. I, I, I still aspire to look up because I really, <laughs> sometimes I get that weird feeling. I'm like, all right, something's about to happen. <laughs> no, it didn't happen. Well, I told Whitney, I said, you know, there, there's going to be so many people that miss the rapture, <laughs> like that, 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 that just don't what realize what Where happened. Everybody go? They're, they're looking down at their phone and the people over here have already disappeared, but they're still just constantly doing that. And then, it's going to take them hours to realize what actually happened when, if they just open their eyes. I wonder why John didn't talk about when he's or, or Paul when he's talking about the rapture, doesn't talk about the loud clank that happens, and the clank being all the cell phones dropping to the floor <laughs> as uh, people are oh, raptured yeah. up. Who knows? Well, we're 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 you're listening to Sweet Tea and Prophecy with Joe Hawkins and Buster Wilson. We're glad you're here. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, there's there's coming uh, something else too that's right on us. And again, we're talking about some things today that are they're right right upon us. Uh, Putin saying right now that he's ready to attack the United States with Satan II missile. Uh, the United Nations right now ready to deal with a seven year treaty of some kind. Uh, the Feast of Trumpets right now on us. So many things happening right now. Well, something else that's happening right now is this uh, digital currency that's coming into the world. And I know that's, a, that's a, 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 an area of great interest for you. Oh, yeah. Won't you lead us into that? Oh, yeah. So central bank digital currencies are a big thing. And if you don't think that they're coming to Mississippi, I want you to click on the, the Corinth, right? So there's a sign war going on in Corinth, Mississippi right now, where the Crystal Burger announced that they are going completely cashless. Mm -hmm by August the 30th. And so they're cashless as of today. Mm. And I believe it was Zaxby's or Chick-fil-A. Burger King too is and, going cashless. Uh, and, yeah. and the, but I know that, I believe it was, and I thought it was funny, I saw this, I believe that Zaxby's in Corinth, they put a sign out that says, to be crystal clear, we accept cash. Yeah. I thought that was probably one of the best burns that I've seen yeah. in, a, in a sign war in a while. while. But, um, but it, this CBDC, I've been talking about this probably for the last year or two. And, you know, in Mississippi, we always think, oh, well, it's not going to happen here. Mm -hmm. We're going to be the last ones that's implemented. Well, we, we actually see where it's implemented, you know, here in Mississippi, where we see a fast food chain not accepting cash. Right. And you're starting to see the implementation of the digital currency coming about, the, uh, the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, they unveiled a global currency, um, the Universal Monetary Unit, mm. and they say that it's going to revolutionize the world economy. And and I think that that's an understatement. It, it's absolutely going to revolutionize the world economy. They, um, their the agenda that they have is to be able to track and trace every purchase that we have. With cash, you can't do that. Yeah. But with this digital currency, you absolutely can you can track and trace. And that's one of the big pushes right now that you see with, um, especially the U.S. And, and other countries, they're wanting to outlaw the Bitcoin because Bitcoin is decentralized. There's no way to track and trace that. Well, mm -hmm. eventually Bitcoin, and, and, and if anybody did have Bitcoin, you saw where the price of Bitcoin went from like $60,000 per Bitcoin all the way down to, I believe it was 27,000 the last time that I saw it. Wow. I mean, and that was, we're talking 10 years ago, Bitcoin was nothing, and it eventually rose up to very, very high money yeah. all the way, and now it's starting to tank a little bit. $27,000 is still a lot of money for one sure. Bitcoin, but you're starting to see it tank because of the implementation of these new digital currencies that are coming out, because whenever governments start getting their hands on these digital currencies and they start regulating this digital currency, they're going to control the digital currency. Right. And that's exactly what they want. They're wanting to track and trace. And I know we don't have any images of it up, but you're seeing areas like um, 
or companies like Discover that are going to start implementing those ESGs, and, and the ESGs are going to be tied to these it's, it's, in, what's it, environmental, social, and governance scores. Right. They're going to start tying those to these CBDCs. And Discover Card was one of them that did it recently where they said that they were going to start, anybody that purchased firearms, they were going to start tracking and tracing them. Mm -hmm. And that's a form of the own um, surveillance state that we talk about as it pertains to the CBDCs. And, and one of the things that you're, and, and people are, are doing it on their own. They're not even waiting for companies to come out and require it or even offer it. You're starting to see people microchip themselves. Um, you got Amazon and you got other companies that they all, they have a way that you can pay by your palm. But so many people, they it's for convenience, right? They just want to put a chip in their hand that has the access to their bank account, they can unlock their car, they can do everything. Because I mean, and it started, I believe it started years ago with the credit card. You know, you had that credit card and it was just so convenient to be able to just carry around this credit card. Yeah. And then as time progressed, you know, oh, well we got this, uh, we got this phone, I can start mm -hmm. paying with my phone and then people got a watch. Oh, I can start just doing things with my watch. And then now it's like, well, what if I don't have any of that? What if I just put a chip in my hand and I could open up doors, car doors, start my car, bank account information? Certainly makes it understandable how the Antichrist can p put a mark on either your right hand or your forehead. Oh, yeah. Why the forehead? Well, maybe maybe you don't have a right hand. Maybe you're maybe you're armless, or maybe you're uh, you just need to. That's the way you have to do it. So there you go. You've got you've got the Antichrist system in place already today. Two points I think that you make on that is one you've made real well already and that is the tracking. Uh, what is it? it? What is it folks? It's just using your card. All right, just think about using your card and never using cash. All right, now go past your card and it's just a number and it's either implanted in a card or it's implanted in your hand or some mechanism is used, but it's not cash. And here's the deal. It's all computer control. And it's just like Joe's been telling you. They can track every expenditure you make. And there's no gathering up a little cash and putting it under the mattress and keeping it for a rainy day. Cash is no good, no longer any good. No, it'd be as worthless as, as this napkin paper right here. And so that's the big thing, tracking. The other thing is, again, the shadow of the tribulation. For the Antichrist to be able to do what he wants to do, what it says in Revelation he will do, this system has to be in place. If you and I have the freedom to have a few bucks squirreled away somewhere, then the Antichrist does not have control. But if the only way I can ever carry on any commerce is through a digital system, then the Antichrist has complete control. Absolutely. And, and I'll tell you, I, I can make a recommendation about a documentary called Shadow Government by Grant Jeffries. He goes into this, and this was a documentary that was probably done 20 years ago. Yeah. And we, total control is what Satan's going after. Yeah. I mean, how many times have has anybody here that's watching this, how many times have you gotten to your card and, and, Maybe the magnetic strip on it or the RFID chip was, you know, scratched somehow, and you put that in the um, the cash register, not the cash register, the the thing that you yeah. pay with card reader, card yeah. reader, and can't talk today. But um, scan it, and maybe it doesn't work, or it just something goes on with it. Well, you have the option right now to say, you know what, I may have a little bit of cash on me, and yeah. then you can pay for it right there. Well, once this goes live and it's completely mandatory, which I 100% believe that it's going to be going mandatory soon. Um, and that's something that everybody's going to have to make a determination on how they're going to handle that. So once it goes live and you go to the store and you try to purchase this, and if it doesn't, if your chip isn't reading properly, too bad, you're not going to do it. But it's a step further because Going back to those 17 SDG goals, mm -hmm. the 17 SDG goals, the environmental, social, and governance scores that they're going to be implementing with these CBDCs, 
the diversity, equity, and inclusion scores are going to have the DIEs, or the, excuse me, the DEIs, um, it's all going to be tied to that CBDC chip. You're going to go to the store, and if you're somebody like me and you like to eat sweet food from time to time, maybe, and, and I believe it's also going to be tied to your health records. I'm not diabetic, but probably one day I will be. <laughs> but if you, if I were to go pick up some candy bars and let's say this chip is in my hand, this chip can monitor my blood sugar. And let's say if I go buy that candy bar and my blood sugar is just a little bit higher than what it should be, I get a little denied message on the screen that says, you can't buy this yeah. because your blood sugar is too high. Yeah. Or we also see that the, and, and part of their SDG goals is they want to eliminate meat. Yeah. They wanted to get rid Which of Which is prophesied. It, it is prophesied. In Second Timothy, it talks about us being forbidden to eat in certain types of foods, which would be translated meats. You go to the store, you pick up five pounds of hamburger meat, if it's even there for you to buy, and if it's not so expensive that you can even afford it, you push it through the cash register, you do it, and then you get a message that says, you've already had your allotment for meat for this month go get some crickets, <laughs> then then you're out of luck. Yeah. I mean, but that's how it's going to be implemented. That's kind of control. I mean, you think about it, folks. I mean, like right now, I know that my bank um, uh, just has a general restriction on the debit card that you can only do $1,200 a day on your debit card. I don't know why. It's just my particular bank. And... I, I can't tell you the times that I've gotten to the $1,200 limit and I've had to call them and like, no, 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 I'm having to buy this thing or that thing and I've, we've got to go over, you know, we pay bills today with this and we've got to, it, that's inconvenient. I'm, I'm an American. I want to be free to spend my money the way I want to spend my money. I work to earn it, right? No, sir. No longer under this system. Uh, and your government is right now putting in the infrastructure to bring this system about. I mean, this is not pie in the sky down the road. Some economist is theorizing this might happen one day. Your government is literally, in fact, last December, they ran a worldwide test on it. And ever since then, they've been putting into place. I've had people say to me, it's not gonna happen because I know too many people that don't even have a bank account. Well, too bad. Uh, when this goes into place, they're going to have an account or they won't have anything. They're going to incentivize getting this just like they incentivized something else over the past three years ago. And you, I think everybody knows where I'm going with, with yeah. that. But they're going to incentivize this. They're going to tell people, well, oh, sign up for this central bank digital currency. You're going to have several banks out there that are going to be prominently CBDCs. Oh, come and sign up with our bank. We will deposit 10,000 credits into your account, you know, if you do it with us and then people are going to, they're going to jump on that. They're going right. to want that money. They're going to want those, they're going to be called credits. They're going to want those credits and um, it's all about the money and that's what people are, uh, they're going to jump on it. All about control too, all about control. And of course, when you start talking about control, you talk about the Antichrist. Oh, there's so much more to say. We, 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 we haven't even scratched the surface, but it's time for us to have to call this thing to an end. But I'll tell you, I've really enjoyed it, Joe. It's good to get back in the saddle with you. Oh, yeah. And we'll have to do this again real, real soon. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to try to make this a weekly thing if we can. Yeah. Um, things are busy. But I do want to say that a lot of the things that we talked about today, it can seem um, a little bit heavy and a little bit disturbing. And we're not, we're not trying to leave you here without any hope. I do want to just read from Titus 2 where we're, we're talking, where we we're, hear about the blessed hope that is in our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm just going to um, start in 11, Titus 2, 11. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us that denying ungodliness and worldly desires, we should live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of our glory, of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that blessed hope that we are looking for is the rapture. And, and I, I, truly, I truly believe that it's going to happen in my lifetime. Yes. I, I truly do. Um, I, I, I do too. I wake up 
every day hoping that mm. today is the day. Um, not because I just want to give up. It's just because mm. I'm ready. Um, I'm ready to go home, and and I really hope the same for everybody. But until we're called to go home, we still got a job to do. And as Buster said, we are called to be watchmen, and it's our job because we have that obligation to inform everybody of these things that are going on. Right. Um, we'll do the hard work for you. You just tune in and listen to what we have to say, and um, and pray about it. And yeah, that's what we're here for. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, you know, uh, I, I want to just remind you too that the rest, the blessed hope, the rapture, is something that is set apart for those who know Jesus Christ. Let me tell you the worst place to be is standing by your side after the rapture's happened if you don't know Jesus and you're left behind. Bad place to be. Bad situation. Uh, I, you know, all you've got to do is be like the thief on the cross. When he realized that Jesus Christ was who he said he was, this guy is, he's for real. He, I, I deserve to die. I'm a criminal. But, but he doesn't deserve to die. He, he really is. He's the Messiah. And he looked over and he said, when you come into your kingdom, will you remember me? Boy, that was a tacit declaration on his part. I believe you're who you say you are. And Jesus looked at him and said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. I want you to know something. You can trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's all it takes. That's all it takes. Ninety-nine times in the Gospel of John, the requirement upon man to be right with God is to believe. People say, well, that's easy believism. As compared to what? Hard believism? I mean, listen, if you think it's easy to bank your eternity on somebody that lived 2,000 years ago that you didn't see, you weren't there, you're just having to take it on faith that he was who he said he was and believe that he can do what he said he would do, you think that's easy, then okay. I'll tell you what, it's like, it's like being pushed out of an airplane, but on the way out, somebody gave you a parachute. What are you going to do? You're going you're gonna to invest everything you've got in your heart and in your mind into that parachute. You're going to say, this parachute's going to save me. That's what you do with Jesus. You trust in Jesus like you trust in a parachute when you're kicked out of an airplane. It's just that simple. He's going to be your life. He's going to save you. He's going to rescue you. He and what he did in his death, burial, and resurrection is the only thing that can make you right for God because he paid the price for your sin. And God is satisfied with the price he paid. And then afterwards, he rose again, conquering death, and giving us the guarantee of everlasting life. What does it mean to be saved? It means to be completely forgiven of any and everything you've ever done wrong and to get the gift of everlasting life. And that's what Jesus Christ is offering. So I hope that you will receive Jesus. And then when the rapture happens and that trumpet blow, I should have brought the trumpet in here and blown it. <laughs> I can kind of halfway blow it. I actually it. thought about bringing mine too. <laughs> Well, let's do it. That's what we'll do stereo, <laughs> stereo uh, shofars. I can kind of halfway blow it pretty decently, but we're going to hear that trumpet blow. And I, I'm like Joe. I get up every day just going, Lord, please. I long for it because I know what it's going to be. And you may be saying, you know, I'll, I'll, a lot of young people are like, well, I want to I want to get married. I want to have children. I want to I want to do this. I want to do I'm not ready to go yet. Listen, anything you're saying I want to stay here to do, you multiply that by like a gazillion times and you'll begin to get a sense of how much greater heaven's going to be. Absolutely. I promise you that. I promise you that. Absolutely. Jesus said that he loves the fact that we long for his return so much that he's going to give one of the great rewards that we can get in heaven for how we live for him is going to be a reward for those who long for his appearing. So... I long for his appearing. That's one reward I know I'm going to oh, get yeah, for absolutely, sure. Absolutely, absolutely. We're just so glad that you joined us today, and um, we hope you tune in next time. And until then, um, make sure you grab you some sweet tea, and, and just uh, we just...
pray that the Lord comes quickly. Maranatha, Lord, Amen. come quickly. Amen. Grab some sweet tea and your sweet word of God. By the way, uh, we want to get you to go to Telegram. If you don't have the, uh, the application called Telegram, download it, get it, and then look for our, our site called End Times Remnant. End Times Remnant. We're, we're putting things there all the time that we'd love for you to find out about. So End Times Remnant on Telegram. And then, of course, our Facebook page, uh, Dr. Buster Wilson is where we're putting our church, uh, also New Prospect Baptist Church. Uh, those two pages on Facebook, you can find a lot of stuff. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And God willing, we'll see you back here next time on Sweet Tea and Prophecy. Thank you so much for being with us.